Everybody, it's great to be back here again <coughs> on Itamar. It's Friday. Pashat Vetchanan, Nachamu Nachamu, it's Shabbat Nacham. After we um, mourned over the destruction of the temples, and now we are being consoled as we will read seven different portions dealing with consolement from Isaiah. Um, and, and we do it as we approach, of course, um, the new year, going through Passover, going through Sukkot, the new year, um, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, the holidays coming up, the festivals. Um, of course, we must relate to this week's portion what happened with Ben and Jerry's and um, their boycott of Judea and Samaria. And, and I'll just say one word before I try to connect to it afterwards. <clears throat> the disgusting act of BDS. BDS is an anti-Semitic, gross, grotesque movement that their whole focus is to come against Israel to show how much they're anti-Semitic, how much they despise Zionism, despise um, the nationalism of the people of Israel, of our purpose as a nation to live in the land of Israel. And everything they do about everything they do, they go about is, is just to is a demonstration of anti-Semitism. And unfortunately, a lot of times you find that very, very liberal, progressive Jews themselves, they could really be entrenched um, in this anti-Semitic attacks against their own people because they're trying to again mingle and assimilate their whole goal. So assimilate to show they have nothing to do with our heritage, nothing to do with our our um, teachings of Torah and where we come from as a nation. And we could be very, very happily um, good Jews anywhere in the world and totally turning their backs to their people. And the way they do it best is when they boycott us and they join forces with the, with the really, really elements of anti-Israel, anti-Semitic elements by boycotting us because we're the people of Israel, because which is so anti-Semitic, it's unbelievable. And it's, it's much... It's much more painful when it comes from even sometimes from Jews. And, and it's, it's, it's really something that we have to speak out against and we have to for surely not let them get away with their terrible atrocities of, of anti-Semitic attacks. And that's number one. But I'd like to show in this week's portion how, you know, I'll give a little Judean dessert. <laughs> I was told my brother-in-law, he came up with it, we have to come up with the ice cream now from Judea and Samaria, special ice cream names. So I came up with, with the, instead of the Judean desert, the Judean dessert. <laughs> but anyway, I'll give you a little Judean dessert now of Torah, and we will try to understand a little bit what's going on. If we look in this week's portion in chapter 6, I want to op open up with this question. It, um, it talks about, it reminds us, of course, of the Haggadah on Passover, on Pesach, where we read about the four children asking questions on the, on the Seder night. And one, and one of the answers we're going to read about is the wise, right? The wise son. And what is, what is the ask, basically? When your child will ask you tomorrow. And this is a very, very profound statement. And he asks you, what are these edot? Edot refer to testimonies. Uh, the child is examining. And when a child has questions about his faith, and he's going to turn to you. So it's a blessing, first of all, when your children will ask you tomorrow. I mean, thank God our children are asking us questions. Oy vavay, as we say, when our children stop asking us questions. And what are they going to ask? They're going to ask about the testimony, about commandments that have, that come to testify. For example, when we put on the tefillin on our, on our, you know, hands and our heads, between, you know, between our eyes, as we say, when we put on our, the mezuzot on the doorposts, or oh, uh, we have our, our Passover celebration, we have to bring the sacrifice of Passover. So these things are things that come to testify, and our children would like to know what it all means. Vachukim. And what a chukim, they refer to commandments that don't have reasons that are logical. Like, for example, we can't wear woolen linen. It's called the Shatnez. It doesn't really have a reason that we can understand. Maimonides, you can try to give a reason, of course, but we know a lot of commandments, the reasons are beyond our... <coughs> Understanding, right, and and hamishpatim, and understanding uh, mishpat, which referred to um, understanding monetary laws, but in reality, our rabbis explain it's not exactly monetary laws because they're very logical in Judaism, but it refers to the actual um, when God punishes different punishments, and the child wants to know why the different kinds of punishments, the levels of punishments that that are mentioned in the Torah itself. Um, so, basically, the, the Torah here is is saying. Your child is going to ask you questions, and we have to be there to be able to answer them. And that's so important. It's a message for all of us that we must know how to answer. 
and and especially in in our lifetimes, in our generation, where the where the world is going bananas, the world's going crazy. People are so moving away from spirituality, moving away from belief in God, and 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 basically assimilating, and and the terrible people going so far as to as to um, create new idol worship. The new idol worship that is that exists today is worshiping, you know, the um, social media is one example. I mean, people are totally going bananas over just trying to um, pre- present themselves on Instagram and other all kinds of social media things and show it and, and make face changes and all kinds of things just to look fancy for the for these things. I mean, it's unbelievable what's going on. And that is, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very external materialistic um, generation that is being drawn away from spirituality. And we have to know the answers. Now, what is the answer? Basically, the question, it's interesting. The answer is given... <clears throat> is in verse number 21. You will tell your child that we were slaves to Paro. God took us out of Egypt with a strong arm. And God made great miracles and wonders in Egypt. Um, and he took us out of Egypt. And he brought us out of Egypt in order to give us the land that he promised to our forefathers. And God commanded us to do all these commandments, right, in order to um, to fear God, to be to be a blessing to us all the days, to keep us alive, to maintain us. Um, as this very, at this very day as well. Um, this will be um, um, it would be um, it would be a, a chesed, kindness to us. That we fulfill all the Torah as God commands us. So it's very interesting. The child is asking some very, very detailed questions about specific things. And the answer that the Torah is giving us, I'll tell them a general answer. Talk about us leaving Egypt, talk about the wonders of Egypt, and talk about how all this was to bring us to the land of Israel. And that is very, very powerful in itself as an answer. And here we have to see, you know, a question asked, why didn't he go, why doesn't the Torah go into details and explain each and every question? But sometimes, you know, a child is asking questions, and I think here this is a very, very powerful point, that when the children are going to ask, and children can be um, in their 30s or 40s and, or 50s, people are always asking questions and always want to know. We have to always turn and, and turn to, to this answer that the Torah is telling us, to remember divine providence in the world, to remember our purpose in the world, to remember where we came from. And that's really the answer given it. Look back at our forefathers. Look back at the promises that God gave to our forefathers and where... Um, they, these promises, how will these promises be later on um, kept as God promised to bring us to the land and, and, and in here we fulfill these beautiful commandments which will bring us a blessing. So first you have to realize our goals, turn, turning back and looking always to our, our parents, our forefathers who brought us into the world and, and what they passed down and being connected um, from generation to generation, going backwards to be connected all the way back to Avram, Avinu, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and that connection and bringing us as a nation we were formed and realizing that what Hashem has done for us, that will bring us to faith, that will bring us to realize, to, have, to, have, to, be, to strengthen our faith in, in fulfilling the commandments of Hashem more than anything. That's a very, very important thing. When your children ask you questions today, look back and, see, and, and show them your parents, show them your grandparents, show them your traditions, show them how, how the love that you receive from your parents and, and what they've given you and that should be given over to them. This is a great blessing, of course. And, and in a more direct answer, Hashem is telling us that the goal of all the Torah is, is, is for us to be a, a people in the land, right? The, the land of Israel is waiting for us to fulfill the commandments of the land of Israel in the land itself. In this direction that we see in the commentaries, and they talk about um, Nachmanides, for example, in this direction, why you know why um, would the Torah speak in a general direction? But I'm not going to go there now, and I just want to first open that question up, because I want to um, go to again to 
get back to what I opened up with, the Ben and Jerry story. And, and first I'd like to bring, because this all connects together, and I'd like to bring down in Isaiah. Um, a fascinating description in Isaiah brought down in, in um, chapter 25. And Isaiah talks about the world, about the crisis, a great crisis that's going to be going on in the world and, and, and that things are going to be happening in the world. And, and then he, and he mentions something very interesting. He says, um, I'm reading chapter 25 from verse number f- um, 6. And, and Isaiah says, V'asa Hashem tzvokot l'chol amim bahar hazeh. God is going to make for all the nations on this mountain He's going to make a very, very great feast. And we'll have very, very um, the finest meat, the finest wine. I'm not going to go into details. Of course, this is all met, uh, metamorphical exp- um, expressions of what's going to be. A great feast on Dr- and basically on the mountain, this mountain, which refers to Jerusalem. And then it goes on to say, Uvila And here is the important um, point I want to bring out today. And God is going to swallow up, basically, eliminate the, the covering, the curtain that is covering over all the nations. It's going to, there's some kind of darkness that is blinding the nations of the world that they can come out, some of them, and actually curse Israel and, and, and come against us and boycott Israel. Because they don't see, they're not looking back at the forefathers, not looking back at, at the divine plan in the world. And the time is going to come on, on Jerusalem, Jerusalem is going to be the center of this happening, is that God is going to unveil the curtain. He's going to remove that darkness, that curtain we see. That curtain is, is blinding the, the world from seeing what they're supposed to see. And Isaiah talks about this concept many, many times, Yeshayahu and Nabi. He talks about the masecha. He talks about the, um, when a person is wearing a mask, which is covering over all the nations. Now this mask, right away what came, what came to, um, um, comes to mind, is of course the corona, that we're all wearing these masks. Everyone's walking around in a mask on indoors, up and coming again, another way. The mask referred to the blindness we're covering over our face, we're covering over our eyes. And this mass that's covering over us, God is saying it will be removed from all the nations. They don't see, they're blinded. God will eliminate the death forever. Now this death can refer to this terrible plagues and all the things in the world. It's also referring to the, um, the revival of the dead in the future. But there are different meanings behind this elimination of the dead in the world. Umachash and this is fascinating. After mentioning that the dead will be the death will be eliminated, and to referring again to bringing back people from from the dead, right? The revival of the dead, the end of the days. Um, and it says that Hashem will wipe off the tears out of all faces. And it will remove the disgrace that is placed upon the people of Israel. Right from all the nations, and here this I wanted to stress this, um, stress this verse. We see here how the Israel is has, is considered people are you know what a chelpa means? Chelpa is a disgrace. Israel is being disgraced by the nations. BDS are leading; those are the leaders behind the disgracing of Israel and the shaming of Israel. And God saying the connection of relieving us from this disgrace is connected to the blindness that will. Um, that the nations are stricken with, and that blindness will be eliminated at the end of days. And this great meal that's going to take place in Jerusalem is celebrating the removal of that blindness. It's a very, very powerful thing that this, the prophet is talking about over here. So the world is, is, is totally, you know, blocked, um, locked up in this terrible, terrible blindness which has to be removed. And when it's removed, there'll be no more BDS in the world, and no more of these... Um, those who, who seek to destroy Israel and, and to find undermine Israel, there's those who speak right out. The Iranians are a lot less dangerous in my in my eyes than the BDS people and the others because the BDS try to undermine us quietly in, the, in a war like that. The Iranians just threaten to bomb Israel 
and, and it's right out, everyone knows knows who your enemy is. But here the BDS, they're very, very, very sly, like the fox, you know, a fox is very sly. And um, they're trying to undermine Israel. And that is very, very dangerous. And those enemies of Israel that work behind our backs and do things behind the scenes are very dangerous. Um, it's much easier sometimes when an enemy comes right against you, confronts you, immediately you know who your enemies are. But of course, we are promised here by the Prophet that, that is, that's going to be eliminated at the end of days. And we have to realize that, that this is a, a, a war of, of, of light against darkness. We have to show, let the light of, again shine, the light of Zion shine in the world. It's such a world is so need, in great need. The world is falling apart at, at its seams. It's terrible what's going on. All these crazy things in the world, the weather patterns and everything is going bananas only because of this veil, because of this curtain that's covering over the eyes of the world and not seeing the truth. Um, we know that we read, we read chapter 40 in, in Yeshayahu, Isaiah, as, as I mentioned before, we're going to be reading the different chapters of consolation after the destruction of the temple. And we, of course, remember our two temples that were destroyed and it opens up the portion of Isaiah, Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, a double consolation. Hashem is, is consoling Israel twice and talking to speak to the hearts of Jerusalem, calling out, Ki we have completed our, um, we have completed our, the cycle we're talking about the we we've put in enough time enough um, time as slaves and now our our sins have been forgiven and the prophet talks about how we paid twice keep flying we, we we paid a price of twice for the sins that we've done and now the voices and you hear the voices verse number six talks about kol there's a voice in the desert and Isaiah talks about different voices here and by saying, prepare the way, let all the, all the rough roads, the rocky roads will be straightened out and let Hashem come through. In other words, this is talking about, again, at the end of days when the roads have been uh, rocky roads and mountains and they're going to be straightened out and people are going to see a clear pathway that, is the, that they're lacking. And then the Hashem and God's honor will be revealed to the world. This is really what, what the pow, one of the powerful messages of, of, of Isaiah is talking about over here. As he goes on to talk about how people, what do they know in comparison to the, to the creator of the universe? I mean, how can we can even mention in the same breath um, the way everything is so exact in God's measurements and how and we spoke about that last week and the way he does things. And when people awaken and realize the greatness of their creator and then looking back at our forefathers that walked in, in, in the footsteps of our creator, the, the universe, um, the world will be a lot better place to live in and there'll be no more bed and gender. Jerry. Um, boycotts <laughs> against Judea and Samaria, but the opposite, the world will come running to visit and to build Judea and Samaria, and to build Jerusalem, to build our third temple, to realize that now the time has come. Shabbat Shalom, B'Sorot Tovot, Yeshua Ben Hamad.